Hey class, so now we're at part two, which is prepping our low poly model um, and turning it into a high poly model that we can use for sculpting in ZBrush. So hopefully um, you have all of your parts combined, grouped and renamed in your outliner. We're gonna wanna make sure that our model is clean. There's no end gons. So I'll use that cleanup tool again, like I used in the at the end of the last video. And then if you have pieces that are not likely to have significant form changes to them in ZBrush, you can UV them now. And um, I ended up UVing most of this model. I fully expect when I retopologize my ZBrush high poly model that I'll have to redo some of these UVs. Um, but that's okay. I just figured since I was here working in the low poly model that I could just um, throw in some UVs. And I do spend quite a bit of time showing you UVs and the packing, the UV process. So be prepared. And then um, finally, we're going to save our model as an FBX or an OBJ and import that into ZBrush. So let's go. Okay, opening up my file, you can see that I have my backpack low, a group, and in it, it has all of my individual pieces that have been combined. And I added the um, suffix underscore low to each of these. Um, that paper, I just smoothed it by pressing three. And um, now I'm going to select the entire group, go to mesh, cleanup, and options. I'm sorry if this is a little bit of a repeat but I'm just gonna select any matching polygons with um, lamina faces or non-manifold geometry or um, faces with more than four sides. So when I did that, when I ran it, nothing was selected afterwards. So that means my geometry is good. No fixing is required. So now you could go to edit and duplicate this entire group and start creating your high poly model by adding some holding edges, a little bit of smoothing, um, which I'll show you later in this video. But since I have parts like the metal eyes, the clasps, and the tummy, that won't change a lot in form when they're brought into ZBrush, I might as well UV them now that they're in a low poly state. So you may be asking yourself, what are UVs? What is she talking about? So UVs are the way that we map a flat texture onto a 3D object. In 3D modeling, we have three dimensions, X, Y, and Z for depth. Um, but for a flat texture, we're going to have just two dimensions. So the U is one direction and the V is the other direction. And so with UVs, we can take a texture example like the Booberry cereal box and we can map it to our just a plain cube in Maya, and together they create a 3D booberry box. Now this is just a basic color map that I wrapped around this box, but we'll also be creating things like specular maps, transparency maps, displacement maps, and that'll come later. So to create our UVs, it's a really quick four-step process. First, we're going to create our UVs by going to the UV editor, create and camera based. Next, we're going to cut our model into pieces by selecting edges and then clicking on cut. Next, we're going to unfold our UV pieces so they're in a flat UV plane. And finally, we're going to pack all of our UV pieces into a zero to one UDIM space. Let's start. So I'm going to select by object, um, this is the object button, um, my tummy piece, and make sure you're on the modeling menu, the drop down menu, and go to UV and UV editor. And you'll see there are some default UVs that were already created, and it kind of creates the UV editor in this pop-up menu. So I'm instead gonna go to panels, saved layouts, and select perspective slash UV editor. So this puts a nice two up view in my model. I'm going to select the like default um, UVs that were already created and delete those and then go to create and camera based. And now you can see that um, these are UVs on the right hand side. They're red because they're like inside out, which is not great. Um, 
So what I really need to do is just solo this one piece of my model. So unfortunately I had it selected by edge rather than by object. So I'm going to select by object again, go to the little solo button, and now I'm just looking at this tummy piece. So what I want to do is create two pieces out of this tummy. So one is kind of the back part, which is going to be hidden anyway, and I'll make this really small. If you go to your cut and sew menu, there's like a really a double line at the top that I like to click so this little cut sew menu flies off. And then I'm going to use my selection arrow and select by edges. And if you double click on an edge, it should select and highlight the rest of the edges in that row. Or you can hold down shift and click. And then once I have the edges of this back piece, I'm just going to hit cut. And you can see they turn bright white. So that um, means that those were cut off into pieces. And then for this front piece, I'm just kind of cutting the two corners of it. And then I'm hoping that when it unfolds, it's going to lay fairly flat. So let's give it a try. Let's go to modify and unfold. And you can see that worked. I've got two pieces, two UV shells. I can select the UV shells by right clicking and clicking and dragging over that UV shell option. And now I'm going to pack my UV pieces into this zero to one UDIM space. Now the back side, it's not so important because um, it's not going to be shown. So if I'm not going to delete it later, um, I can at least just scale it down so it's really small at this point. And then for the front piece, um, each zero to one space represents a set of texture maps. The more sets of texture maps you have, the more complexity you have in your model. So I want to pack a few pieces into one zero to one space. I can move, scale, and rotate just like any other object in my scene. And um, I'll show you what it looks like to try and pack all of these pieces together. Next, I'm going to grab these metal clasps. Now notice that they have, there's four metal clasps that are exactly the same. So what I'm actually going to do is separate them. So select them by object, grab one, separate them, and I'm just going to work on one of them. And I'll probably end up deleting the other ones and just using this particular piece all over the model. So I'm going to scale up this UV and then there's a little bit of a time jump here where I, um, had scaled it up, sorry, and rotated it. But essentially what I want to do is solo the piece on the left. So again, use that little solo button. And then I'm going to um, look by wireframe right now, just because it's hard for me to see all of the edges underneath um, this clasp. And then I don't do a great job of cutting this one up but um, basically the idea is to cut edges where it'll be hard for any joins to be seen. So I'm just selecting kind of these bottom edges and I want to unfold this piece into one giant piece. So um, kind of selecting the edges as I go along and then selecting these middle pieces as well and cutting those. And then once I'm kind of happy, I go to modify and unfold it to see what it looks like. So you can see it's flattened all right, um, but it may help if I add a couple more cuts. So I add these little edges, select these edges and go to cut and sew and cut. And then when I unfold again, this looks a little closer to what makes sense for this piece. I could absolutely cut it into two pieces, but I just didn't really feel like it. Um, another thing I like to do is go to modify and um, straighten UVs. Straightening the UVs leaves it a little awkward, um, but it is easier to pack into the space, especially with such a, a flat object like this clasp. I figure I can do better. So 
So um, if you make a mistake with one of your cuts, you can sew it back together. So that's the opposite of cut is sew. So just select that edge and sew it. And then I unfold and straighten your V's one more time. And I'm getting this kind of odd shape. Um, so I figure I'm just going to use this UV shell as it is. Now this clasp can be exactly the same or duplicated, um, including the UVs duplicated and positioned all over my model. So I'm just going to replace the other clasps with this one. Um, what that's going to do is just save a little bit on texture space. Um, yes, all the pieces will be exactly the same in texture, but um, it's such a a minor piece and metal it's not going to be that um, doesn't need to be that distinct that I think by being able to save on texture space save on polygons um, it'll make this a little more efficient piece okay so once I'm done kind of positioning these more or less in place I just kind of eyeballed them to begin with and then I'm gonna open up my UV editor again I'm going to select each of the individual pieces and combine them so that they are one mesh again. And you can see on the right that all of the UVs for each of these pieces are stacked on top of each other, which is really nice. It saves in um, like texture density. And now since I deleted and kind of pulled some shenanigans with these different pieces, I need to regroup them. So that's combine put them back into my low. You can see that there's some like um, extra information there, this metal clips low. So I think I actually have like two pieces on top of each other. So I'm gonna delete those. And I'm actually just gonna delete this whole group if I don't need it. And I don't, so make sure that my four together and delete any extra pieces. And then this like arrow with a piece of paper is like an extra group, so I can delete that as well. So now this is nice and clean. And then again, in the UV editor, I have all Let me show you one more piece. On um, so that'll be the metal eyes that I think are important. Um, make sure you save if you haven't in a while. So I'm gonna select the eyes and you can see that there's red faces and then there's blue faces the red ones are actually inside out so we want to make sure that those are not a problem um, so they're already selected to the right is the default uvs that were created when i created this object so i'm going to select those and delete them and then go to create and camera based i just find this is so much easier to work with and um, select my edges double click on my edges to um, select the entire edge loop or shift and select. And because the front of the eye is like a bronze and then the outer part of the eye is a different metal, I'm just gonna cut these into two separate shells. So again, selecting by edge. Oh, sorry, not that one. And then going to my cut sew. And to make these pieces, especially the pieces with depth lay flat, it's a good idea to have a cut somewhere along the edge. And now you can see when I unfold this, I've got my middle piece and the outside piece. Now the outside piece is not really laying flat if um, there's a bit of a distortion there. So I do want to cut it down again. I could potentially cut off these back sides or in this case, I'm just gonna delete them. I don't need them. And you can see on the right what that deleting the faces does to that UV shell. And now if I unfold one more time, it's giving me a nice outer ring and then the center is the center bronzy part. So I did try to straighten the shell. I don't think it looks very good. It doesn't seem like it would pack that much nicer. 
So I'm just gonna make that small and then I'm gonna wrap this outer shell around this piece. So the more space uh, a piece takes up in this zero to one texture space, the more um, detail and density you can get. So that's why it's important to not take up too much space with any given part, unless it's a really important part. So um, like the tummy or the top of this owl um, backpack, that's gonna need a lot of detail. So when I'm packing these in the future, I will make sure that those areas have a little more density or a little larger so that they have more um, space for detail. And then I'm doing the same thing with the metal clasp where I took the one eye that I already UV'd and I'm just moving it over. <laughs> and um, so now we have both eyes will be exactly the same and they'll be um, the UVs will be stacked on top of each other. And let me just show you um, two more pieces. Oh, remember, um, since I had to regroup or recombine those eyes, I had to rename them, for delete history, freeze transformations, and all that good stuff. So again, for this um, part that's actually going to be really important and detailed in the texturing, I'm going to just cut off this back piece by double clicking on the edges, going to cut and sew, and then it highlights the areas that have been cut off. And then this part that's gonna be hidden, it may show a tiny, tiny bit, so I'm gonna make it really small. Um, note that you can cut things either in the perspective editor or in the UV editor. You can you know, use your tools there as well. And then I'm just um, scaling this down and making that other little piece very small. So the last one that I'll show you really fast is the nose where I soloed this and then wanted to cut off the back, basically the back piece that'll be hidden. So selecting those edges, cutting them off. And then I decided to just make a few choice cuts so that this would flatten out better the front piece. And hopefully that makes sense. You can rotate and then this is the back piece so I can make it really small and I could potentially uh, delete it later and now um, I'm not going to show you all of the pieces but I'm just going to show you how I pack my um, UVs so I have UV'd all of these pieces and I'm going to spare you the boring UVing part um, but basically I want all of these pieces to fit into two, so these two highlighted areas. And I wanna make sure that I'm making the best available use of my space so that areas that are important, like the tummy, um, the bag itself, get a lot of space on the map here, on the texture maps. And then areas that aren't gonna be seen or not that important, um, get a lot less. There are automatic layout tools. So if you go to like modify and layout with all of these pieces selected, Maya will attempt to lay them out for you. However, um, Maya doesn't know what's important to you. And um, so it's a really good idea when you're packing these um, texture spaces that you take into account um, what needs to be large, what is going to get a lot of paint and texture later and then what um, isn't going to be seen. And especially if you're going to be um, modifying your model, like this packing process is not really that important um, right now. Once we go into ZBrush and Sculpt, and then um, when we bring our model back out to retopologize, I think this packing will be much more important. But for now, I just, I happen to kind of get into it and keep going. So I'll just show you what a packed UV looks like that's on two UDIMs. Okay, so now they're all there and you can see that I tried to make the pieces that are most important um, larger and then still have space for the littler pieces. Now we're ready to prepare a high poly model that we'll be able to sculpt on it in ZBrush. 
So I'm going to go to select my entire group of my low poly model, duplicate it, and then go to display and hide that selection. So now the duplicated model that I created, this backpack low one, is going to become our high poly model. So now with this high poly model, it's what I'm going to be importing into ZBrush. And I'm basically just trying to add a few more multi-cuts um, to make it like adding like holding edges to the sides. I'm adding some cuts in the middle just so if I go into ZBrush and start subdividing it, that there'll be kind of uniform or more even geometry across the model. So I'll have enough geometry that I have something that I can sculpt and work with in addition to adding subdivisions. Before I do that, I really should rename all of my models. So you're gonna go to modify, search and replace names. And basically I'm gonna look for that underscore low and I'll replace that with underscore high and apply that to everything that's selected. So then select all of the um, those sub parts and do search and replace for those two. This will be really important when we're baking in Substance Painter, um, but don't be surprised if when we take our exported model from ZBrush into Substance or back into Maya and then to Substance that we have to do some renaming then too. It's okay. So you can see the more pieces that we have, the more we have to deal with throughout this entire pipeline. And what I'm doing here is, again, going through each of the detail pieces. So for this one, I ended up adding bevel, which added some nice um, subdivision and some nice extra geometry. For these straps, I am using the multi-cut tool and just cutting them by hand because these pieces are um, very organic because they're leather. I think it's okay to just add some holding edges on the inside of these um, belt loops. I'm adding some holding edges on the outside. I kind of just winged it a bit and I press three for smooth preview whenever I get to a part that I want to just kind of look and see how the model's progressing and how it's holding up. You can also try just selecting the object, beveling the whole thing or going to mesh and smoothing the whole thing. But always check to see what smooth preview looks like. Um, if it just looks like a mess, then it's probably better to add your holding edges by hand. For the tummy piece, I'm just going to add divisions. So that's kind of like smoothing. Um, and then I'm adding some holding edges using multi-cut on the side. So control, click and drag. Oh, I guess I got rid of my um, add divisions and just did it in favor of adding them this way. So there's really no right or wrong here. Um, just trying to add some extra detail so that um, when we get it into substance, it can subdivide easily. If someone out there has a different method for making these um, high poly meshes for ZBrush, definitely let me know. But this is kind of what I end up doing. And I'm always learning, so I'm always interested in hearing um, what other folks do. I tend to find large faces that are just, that are undivided and have a lot of problems in ZBrush, but that's maybe just me. So here I'm just adding some holding edges to the top and the bottom of these curves for the eyes. And I did make each eye different, so um, that's okay. But when you hit press three to smooth them, they look pretty good. All right, so for the nose, I did experiment by going to Edit Mesh and Smooth, and that didn't look very good. So instead, I'm just adding these edges by hand and then smoothing. And I think that looks pretty good. So now just going through and combining any objects that need to be combined. Um, and that owl top just adding those holding edges on the sides and the back and then just an edge on the middle. I did kind of worry about these kind of curved edges on the side of this backpack. There's a few ways that you can do it just by um, selecting these and moving them around. 
They can also be sculpted later in ZBrush, but I just kind of wanted to start the beginning of that curve. And so I just kind of pushed and pulled some vertices to see if they would work. We'll see once it gets into ZBrush how that worked, if it didn't really. Um, so for the metal clasps, I literally just hit bevel and um, that added some geometry, some holding edges. And then once I was done, I wanted to make sure to um, delete history and freeze transformations on this entire object. And you wanna make sure too that your pivot point is set at the zero, zero, zero mark. So I wanted to zoom in and just make sure that the bottom of this backpack, the pivot point, so press D to move the pivot and snap it to this middle bottom of the backpack and then snap that to the center of the origin. So the zero, zero, zero. Okay, and now um, that I have my whole object and I'm smooth the areas that I'd like to smooth, I'm gonna select this object again, go to File, Export Selection, and the Option Box. So you wanna make sure you're exporting as an FBX, but you could also export as an OBJ. And then just for include and reference objects, um, I just don't really have any. And then hit export selection. Make sure that this is going to be named and it's located in a place that makes sense for your model. You can see I've tried this before, so I'm just double checking. Under geometry on the right hand side for options, um, I like to include smoothing groups and then tangents and binormals. Once you hit export selection, it's going to give you um, any warnings and errors of meshes that were smoothed or tessellated. I think that's fine for now, so don't worry about that. Those were just the, the layers that I literally had smooth preview turned on. So now we're good to go. Let's open up this model in ZBrush for sculpting, and that'll be in the next video. Thanks.